Welcome to this tutorial by River City Graphics. Today I'll be showing you how to use the UI loader component in Flash. So to get started, we're going to create an ActionScript 3 document. Then I'm going to go to File, Save As, and save this so that some of the ActionScript later on will work correctly. So I'm just going to say UI loader component. And I'm just going to save over that. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go to Window, Components. And I'm going to drag out four button components. And then I'm going to drag out the UI loader component. So I'll just scroll down, grab the UI loader, bring it out. Then I'm going to go to Window, Align, and grab my Align Palette, and select all of the buttons. Click this button right here to align the top edge, and then click right here to distribute the horizontal centers. So that will distribute them all so they have an even um, distance in between. And I'm actually going to space them out a little bit more. So now that I've done that, I'm going to move this towards the bottom here. And then I'm going to take my UI loader and we're going to scale that up. So I'm going to grab the transform tool, move the reference point to the corner, and then I'm going to size it up so that it's the width of, over all of the buttons. So I'm just going to position that a little bit with the arrow keys. And now I think uh, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to close that up and I'm going to grab the text tool and we're going to make a dynamic text box right here. And we're just going to position that underneath the buttons, the two middle buttons right, right there. And that's going to display some text for um, the percentage of what's loaded within our UI loader. So now we need to start adding some instance names. So for this, I'm going to click on the UI loader and then just say my loader. Close that up. And then I'm going to go to each of these buttons and I'm just going to say BTN1. Call this one BTN2. BTN3. And BTN4. All right, so now that we've done that, um, I still need to add an instance name to this text field, so we're just going to call it percent .txt. All right, so now that I've done that, we're going to open up the Actions panel, and now we're ready to start uh, actually coding this out. So the first thing we need to do is grab the, uh, the URL that's going to be loaded into this, um, this UI loader, and it's actually an image, so I'm going to make a variable for that. So I'm going to say var img url for image url colon and then string with a capital s space equals space couple of quotes and a semicolon inside of the quotes i'm going to type the um, url that this image is at and it's on my desktop which is why i had to uh, save it at the beginning of the tutorial so it's in a folder called stock photos and then slash and it's a barn that jpeg all right so now that we have that done we need to request this uh, url so we need to make another variable, and it's going to be var space my request colon, and it's a URL request. All right, I'm just going to copy that because we're going to need that again in a second. All right, and then after that, we need space equals space new space, and then URL request, and then open parenthesis img URL close parenthesis semicolon. So basically, we're just requesting the URL that's in this variable right here. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that the content within this UI loader is um, scaled down. Instead of showing it full size, what the actual content is, uh, we're going to scale it to the size of the UI loader that we put on the stage. So we're going to say my loader dot loader dot scale content, and the C on content is capital, and we need to say space equals space true semicolon. And then lastly, we need to load in this URL. First, we made the URL, then we uh, got a request for it. So now we need to basically link the URL with the loader. So we just have an enter um, and then say my loader dot load, open parenthesis, my request, close parenthesis, semicolon. All right, so the next thing we need to do is add some event listeners. Um, for the percentage, so we need to. We're going to do this by basically setting up two um, event listeners, and one of them is going to be for um, while it's loading, and then the other one's going to be for once it's done loading. So I'm going to say my loader dot add event listener. All right, open parenthesis event. Actually, let's make a capital event um, dot complete comma, and then we're just going to say um, load done. So that will be when it's actually finished loading. So then close parentheses, semicolon. We need to add another one, and I'm just going to copy this because the start is basically the same. So my uh, loader dot add event listener, um, and then the event, instead of event, we're going to make it progress. 
event with a capital P and a capital E. And then instead of dot complete, we're going to say dot progress. And then for uh, the function name, we're just going to say load. Let's just say load progress without a W. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to create each of those functions. So I'm going to um, hit enter a couple times and say function. And we'll do load progress first. Space and then events colon progress event. Let's see if it's got it in here. Progress event. And then close parenthesis colon void. Open uh, curly bracket. Enter a couple times. Close curly bracket. And then up arrow key. And inside of here, we're basically going to set the percent text um, to let me let me just uh, type it out and then I can explain it. So we're going to say percent txt dot text space equals space and then it's going to be math dot round open parenthesis events dot target dot percent loaded and the L on loaded needs to be capital and then a close parenthesis space plus space and then a couple of quotes and inside the quotes we're going to have a percent sign and then at the very end a semicolon so basically what this is doing is it's, sending the, it's setting the percent text which we set at the very bottom there um, to the number, um, the percent loaded of what's in the UI loader. So we're getting um, event.target.percent loaded is getting um, the percentage that's loaded of uh, the UI loader of the image and then it's rounding that with the math.round function and then at the very end we're just adding on a percent sign um, so it'll look like whatever it has this this whole thing right here is the number so it'll be like 50 and then it'll add this percent sign at the end so that it just graphically looks uh, better so the next thing we need to do is uh, write that other function so we're going to say function and then we said load uh, done and then space events colon events with a capital E close parenthesis colon void open curly bracket enter a couple times close curly bracket up arrow key and then basically once it's done we just want to set the percent text to not have anything displaying because it's done loading so you don't really need to sit there and see it on 100 percent so we'll say percent txt uh, dot text space go space, a couple of quotes, and a semicolon. So it'll basically be equal to nothing. All right, so I think that we can do control test movie right now. And you should see the first image right here. Um, if I do simulate download, you'll see that the percentage is coming in for that image. And then it displays once it's done and takes the text away. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, basically set up a little kind of image gallery with those buttons. So um, I'm going to I'm just going to hold down the slash key, which basically um, this doesn't show up. It's not action script. Um, it's basically just a comment thing. So I'm using it to um, separate our code so that you guys can kind of graphically see the difference. Um, this is basically setting up the image that's starting the gallery. And then underneath this, we're going to start with the buttons and the functions that run um, loading in those images. So we're going to say btn1, and we're just going to write some labels first. So btn1.label space equals space, a couple of quotes and a semicolon, and we're just going to say, let's just keep it simple and just say image one, and I'm just going to copy that, paste it three times, we'll make this two, make this three, make that four, and the same thing for these images. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to add some event listeners for each of these, and we'll say um, btn1 and dot add event listener open parenthesis it's going to be a mouse event and that's a capital M and a capital E dot click in all caps comma space and then we need a function name and I'm just going to say load image one close parenthesis semicolon so I'm just going to copy that and then we're going to change that one according to the number that the image and button is. So we're going to say BTN1, BTN3, BTN4, and then load image 2, 3, and 4. So it's going to run each of those functions depending on what's clicked. So now we're going to write those functions. So we're going to say, let's say function load image 1, 
and then space, open parenthesis, event, colon, mouse, event, close parenthesis, and then a colon, and then a uh, void, open curly bracket, enter a couple times, close curly bracket. And then inside of this, um, we're going to load in basically everything that we have up here. So um, I made this this divider here so that it would be really easy to just go back up and copy all of that. So basically when they click the button, we want it to say, I don't care what that image was before, we're loading in a new image into this UI loader. Um, so it's going to, instead of having all this, it's going to put in whatever other image we um, do. So actually let me, so I'm just going to paste this in, paste this in here. And the only thing that we need to change is this um, variable right here, this image URL string right here. Um, we're going to change the image. Um, on this one we don't need to because we want that first image to be the same as the image that initially loads. But for the next one we're going to change it. So I'm going to basically just copy this function. Let me, uh, let me scroll this up so that I can grab the whole thing. We're going to copy this function. And I'm just going to hit enter a couple times so that you can see the difference. And then we need to change this to load image 2. And then we want this to load the second image, um, which is going to be butterfly. It's the other image I have. And then we're going to hit enter a couple times more, paste it again. And then for that image, we're going to be, it's going to be bridge. And then I'm going to hit enter a couple more times. And we're going to paste the last image in there, and it's going to be coast. All right, so I hope you guys followed that. Um, basically, um, oh, I forgot I need to change this. I have load image 2 is the function. We need load image 3 and load image 4. All right, so just to recap, basically, we are creating four functions so that whenever a button is clicked, it's going to run that function and it's going to load in a new image into the UI loader and it's going to run the percentage and everything um, just like it did for the initial image. Um, so I think we're ready to test this now. So we're going to go to control test movie. All right, you can see our initial image loaded in. We'll click on image two and it loads those in. And it's not doing the percentage because I haven't done simulate download. I just wanted to show you how the images work. Um, if you do simulate download, it's going to start with the first image. Should be the barn. All right, when you click on another one, it'll load that in. And the benefit of using the UI loader over um, other methods is sometimes with other methods, you might load in an entire flash file rather than loading in pieces. And this might be fine if your flash file is small, but if you're doing something like a website, most users aren't going to look at an entire website and they might find it kind of offensive to sit there and wait for your entire website to load before they can use it. So using UI loaders, you basically load what they want to see. So they're going to see a piece of the website, so it'll load once they get to what they want to see and it'll load much quicker. Um, so it's a much better way to uh, load uh, items within Flash. So as you can see, I can go through these and they'll load in. Um, once it's loaded, it's going to keep doing it to up to 100%. It's not going to be quick because I keep simulating the download every time. But once um, it's on the web, it would, it would load very quickly. Um, so I hope you guys learned something about the UI loader and learned how to use the percentage on it um, and, lo and learned how to um, load at runtime rather than loading an entire thing beforehand. Um, so don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment, and I'll have the last tutorial in our component uh, series tomorrow, so check back for that. Thanks for watching.